I really didn't know anyone that had done this before. Some of them didn't believe me at first. Tom Anderson on Fox News Talk, K-O-A-N. When you get a family like this with such a neat story, it's something that should be shared with the public because even if you can't afford to take your fifth grader or yourself to these places, you can maybe live vicariously through their videos, through Corin's experiences and his mom's. I grew up on a farm in the Midwest. I made my first film when I was eight years old. I was the playground photographer. My father had an eight millimeter Bell and Hell camera. So I've been looking through the lens for a long time. And I've been making documentaries in Alaska. I've been documenting all of our social issues, challenges, and a few narrative pieces. I've made films for many, many years all across Alaska and outside Alaska. I've traveled around the US making films as well. You start spinning this around, going up and down, and then I drop this other one, and then I keep on going up and down and going to go opposite directions. Unfortunately, I'm not very good at this, so it's not gonna work. But I want to try anyway. I have four loose teeth. One of them's like about to come out. Dishon, 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 and Dishon. I am five foot one and a hundred and three pounds, maybe. Tomorrow we're, we are leaving to go to New York and then we are going to go to Ireland. And what I hope to find in Ireland is a four-leaf clover that are indigenous to Ireland. That I'll be able to learn Kung Fu. The Taj Mahal, Pyramid of Giza, the Great Wall of China. I hope to go to all of them. Before we signed on for the big trip, we took a three-week practice trip to Greece over spring break. You cannot take photographs or video inside Vergina. This is Greece. It's named after a Greek monster with nine heads. It's in the name of what we're taking to it. Have you guessed yet? Uh, Hydra! Right now we're in Athens. Yes, and what are we gonna do? We're going to the Parthenon. Let's go! Okay, let's go. It's way bigger than the sauce. Way bigger I'm showing the Greek countryside between and Thessaloniki. I wanted to see what it was like traveling with a child that age across 10 time zones in a country that didn't speak that much English and it was really good. But at one point we got separated in a crowd in Thessaloniki where there are not so many English speaking people as there are say in Athens. Our plan in place was that if we got separated ever, that we would go back to the last place we had seen each other and wait. Well, what I didn't figure in that equation was that we might have different perceptions of where that was. It was crowded, everybody's wearing black, everybody looked alike, it was a mess. And I was on the verge of panic, on the verge of tears. I went back to the street corner where we'd been separated and I waited and I looked and I combed and finally I just went back to the hotel thinking, I'm gonna have to call our, our emergency number and say we've been separated and I don't know where he is. He was on the bed in the hotel room watching cartoons. Not only had he found his way back through these hordes of people, 
He had talked his way into the room without a key with a manager who didn't speak English. And that's when I knew we could take the trip. We did have a family tragedy. We did lose my sister's son. And what that did for me was to bring home the fact that, I mean, we know this already, life is short. But if something like that were to happen to me, I would want to know that I had spent as much quality time with my son as possible. It was then she proposed the question, do you want to go around the world? Yeah, Tom, I think this is just an amazing opportunity. I wish I had had the opportunity myself and, and uh, would love to do it with my kids someday. Vitamins and medicines, medicines. school supplies, school supplies. Electronics. electronics, mommy's clothes, little towels, <laughs> iTunes gift cards, very what handy. 100 bucks. <laughs> iPads, we both have iPads. Our introduction to our Serve Us network so that we can stay with people. Yay, a couple of maps. We've got our carry-on knapsacks and our passports and our shot records. We got lots of shots. And here's some of the things we hope to do. Walking tours, bicycle tours, a barge trip, a cruise, a safari, cooking classes, language immersion, and staying with Serve Us. The red and grays are mine, the green and golds are yours. Well, the first step was to to sell our house. Which went really quickly, in like three weeks. Got rid of the car. We got rid of over half of our material possessions. They had to call in a second truck. Yikes. Bye, piano. When you get down to it, you can travel for the same amount that you can live in a house, if you're smart about it. People always ask, didn't you feel sad? Didn't you feel nostalgia when the moving truck pulled away and you left your house for the last time? One spot in the living room that uh, the sun always came out and hit that direct spot. So I'd always lay there in the sun. So I got a chance to do that before the house was sold. We sold most of our stuff in a big garage sale. I want to really get that. I mean, some of the stuff I wouldn't sell. I have to keep a little bit of Legos, like Star Wars, of course. It made me think, like, wow, I have a lot of stuff. My first emotional response was relief. I felt out from under the mortgage, out from under the taxes, the car payment, the car insurance, all the responsibilities. We were free. Before we left, we sat down and we made a list, our wish list. And wherever that overlapped, we made sure we did that. We really just decided where we were going from either where the cruise ship was going to take us or what countries were closest. What I was hoping to see was that unseen sight, that thing I haven't seen before. That taste I haven't had before. We're not the center of the universe, as we may have been brought up to believe. We probably took, uh, would you say everything? Camel, cars, taxis, trains, hydrofoil, segways, cruise ship, airplane, bikes. If you can think of a way of transportation, you probably did it. I was studying European art. It's like being in school and being teleported to the places in your textbook. He was noticing and seeing things that I wasn't noticing and seeing. So that was an added bonus, seeing the world through a 10-year-old's point of view.
When I started the trip, most of my traveling uh, before this was around the United States to Hawaii, but I had gone to uh, Mexico before and some Central America. I was a little bit bored of school, so I hadn't been traveling much, but uh, I knew my mom had traveled a lot before. Alaska offers many different options for homeschooling. So we chose a program that was more science oriented. It was great. I mean, he really got a pretty thorough education in that suitcase full of books. Well, I always wanted to go to Ireland because I'm half Irish. We didn't plan much. We just kind of bought a one-way ticket to Ireland. It was like, eh, let's go to Europe first, and a little bit of Africa and Asia. After Ireland, Scotland was right next to it, so... Scotland! I was thinking it would be fun for uh, Lackey to show. He mentioned that he likes to do gardening. Yeah, yeah. Let's put his wellies on and show corn in his garden. Yeah. That would be very uh, regionally specific. This riding on the other side of the road is... I'm still not used to it. <laughs> no, you keep trying to get to drive the car. <laughs> <I'm so laughs> trying to get it to take over the car. We would stay with people who were friends of friends or friends of friends of friends. All it took was an entree, an introduction. It could be by email. We also use the Servas method. It's a wonderful family exchange situation. It's very compatible with traveling with children because a lot of these people have their own children and you'll get to see the inside from that level as well. The potatoes, which have spurted all over the top, never mind. Um, and we have, and here we've got soup. <laughs> Double trouble. You love them, huh? <laughs> and we have a roast beef, which is now going to rest in the bottom of it. And you do all this while driving four different children, four different places, all day long. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> That's impressive. I had a friend named Lucky. His family was a friend of one of our friends that lived in Scotland. We got to know their family and ate melted candy bars on top of ice cream. A especially thick version tonight. Whoa. Go, just drag it off. Drag it off. Now, what time do you usually go to sleep on a school night? Nine, nine, half nine. Half nine. And does it make it hard to go to sleep when you've had melted candy bars on your ice cream? <laughs> Is that yummy? Yeah. What do you think? Is that a keeper? Oh, you're gonna have me eat it? Oh my goodness, okay. It's safe to say that ice cream is universally appreciated by 10-year-old boys or 12-year-old boys. Every single day of travel with your child is educational. There's no way that is not educational between the money, the language, the food, the map reading. I don't even have to spell it out. I think everyone knows that innately, that traveling with a child is an eye-opening experience. The good news is you wear the same outfit every day, so we don't have any continuity problems. Yeah, everything was documented. If it caught my eye when it was happening, I photographed it. I took at least 12,000 photographs and about 12 hours of videotape. 
I am not a professional videographer. I do consider myself to be a professional stills photographer, but not a videographer. And I brought lightweight but quality tools with me. I brought a Canon stills camera, the G11, and I brought a Canon Vizia. And then I also brought an iPad, as my son did, but I found out very quickly that that did not take care of my needs, and so I had to get my laptop FedEx to me in Scotland. Corin is doing all his schoolwork this year on the road. He's traveling all around the world and learning about what education is like in lots of different countries. We had a huge pack of stuff, books and CDs and all that stuff. He went to school in six different countries, from European to Asian to African. I thought it was important for him to be able to connect with other children. You're cold. It's cold and windy. And we don't know for sure where we're going. I was put on a sixth grade curriculum for the main part because the geography was following like exactly where we were. Hello! Hi, yeah. Nice to meet you, Maria. <laughs> Hi. Corin. Guys, this is Corin. He's our, our guest student for the day. You should be excited. Your first class today is going to be Chinese. <laughs> when I went to schools, I had this presentation that I showed to the classes. It consisted of a slideshow and some objects from Alaska, like Eskimo yo-yo and uh, some pictures of Alaska, some facts. And the slideshow was really like how big Alaska was, proving that we didn't live in little ice huts. I would like to compliment the class because they knew more about Alaska than people from New York. Because <laughs> <laughs> people in New York think that you all live in igloos. We're parkas because we're Eskimos, and all we live on are fish. Six forty seconds plus fourteen forty seconds. Sarah, what do I get here? The schools around the world, in comparison to the United States, most of them were a lot more challenging. I noticed. Do you just call it primary one, or do you call it grade, or do you um, call it grade? Are you in middle school? Uh, no, I am in primary. Iceland, I was there at the school for an entire day. The only people I could really talk to would be people in English classes. I had a guide, a friend that I made there. It wasn't really as strict as American schools. It was more like, learn this and you're good. They tried to teach more practical things than like algebra, like real life things. Take your balls. It was more of a field trip than it was a school day. It was definitely different, but there are always the little things in school that never change. The things I saw that children everywhere have in common is that they want to be liked, they love to play with balls, that they love sugar, and that they were fascinated with the iPad. While there was certainly electronics, no question about that, the video game was as alive and well as a soccer ball, but it didn't dominate their lives the way it does here. Nobody's fat. And if you think about it, if you started your day with one to three hours of exercise, I don't think we'd have that problem here either, and especially if you went and you ate rice and vegetables for the rest of it. But I think there's a lot to be learned from other cultures. I would love to see our parks filled with communal exercise in the morning in the way that we saw in China. The lunches definitely were more healthy than they are here. I see every kind of lunch. Oh, nice. Show us what you have. Oh, that looks delicious. What what are the, what flavor are they? Um, that's egg. Okay. Okay. And what do you? Fish cake. Fish cake. Okay. Oranges. I've had my son eating 
everything since he was one year old. I've taken my dinner and stuck it in the blender because I wanted him to like all flavors. So food was never an issue. There was always something in every country that we could eat and we'd be fine. So if you want to travel with your kids, you should start them early. I would pretty much try anything. So I feel like roasted beetles or something. I'm pretty sure that's not an experience I want to have. But yeah, I would try everything else. I saw many different styles of eating when we were traveling. A lot of locally grown produce served family style where kids just took the amount they were going to eat instead of all the waste we have with a mandated vegetable this and fruit that that's not even tasty that winds up in the trash. 50% of the vegetables here wind up in the trash. Apples. Everybody wants the apples for dessert. Uh, is that what's going on? <laughs> Whereas these kids actually liked their food. They also participated in the maintenance. They weren't waited on like they are here where we have janitors who clean everything. And that taught them from a very early age to not be slobs. Where are we? We are in Prague. Where in Prague? And what does she say when she stops? I do not know. How are you going to know where to get off? Oh, I'll leave that up to you. I woke up every morning excited about what we were doing, where we were, and that we were together, and that we had unstructured time. She was really excited about getting on to the new places. Saigon. How are you feeling this morning? So she really wanted to do a certain thing. I was going. We're here? Yeah, we're here. He was young enough that he could share a room with his mother and it wasn't awkward yet. But we were getting there. So I think it was a perfect time. And all prices go up for children at age 12. And he was 11 when we came home. So what unique spot in a mother-son relationship does that happen where they get the youth discount and you get the senior discount? That's a tiny window. Depending on where we were, sleeping was a big up for me. He does not want to get up today. So what are you thinking you order? When I uh, traveled around the world with my mom, I certainly got to uh, know her a lot better. Learned some new techniques to stop her snoring. My dinner partner. As I was going through the countries, there was always that little thing. For that moment in your life, you had to have that thing. I learned how to negotiate with her a lot better. Just thought. That would be really cool to have, like a little bag of marbles from Prague. So, my results are, my favorite is this big. Mm -hmm. Second favorite is this big. Third favorite is this big. Well, being little would be an advantage, wouldn't it? Uh, no. Actually, it isn't. This is my hitter marble, so the bigger it is, the better. Everyone wanted to sell you something. This is linen and silk lady, all by hand. So much? 40 euros. 40 euros. Yes. yes. I'm not buying another one. I paid 100 for this. I 
I would rather get a 25 cent really cool little thing rather than a hundred dollar eh kind of thing. So creepy. And we are about to get on a cruise. She buys saving coupons. Saving coupons? Yes. Okay. This is the couch. You have a couch. Um, there's a table, there's a, uh, two stands, flat screen TV. And Ooh, flat screen TV. Like, I think this is a queen bed. Oh, yes. Well, it's big enough for two. It's two s singles put together. Okay. And here is what. The money was for this little balcony with fresh air. Yay! Oh, yes. Whoa! I thought it was perfect for a mother and son to travel. We were safe. We could eat the food and not worry about foodborne or waterborne illness. And we had separate activities. When he wanted to play ping pong and I wanted to read or I wanted to go to the port lecture, we could do that. We were going to be on there for a month, which turned into two months. But I was like, well, that's cool. Free food. These are called the exotic cruise itineraries. They're not the Bahamas, they're not Florida. I mean, some of these places had only had cruise ships coming for the past six months. It was raw, and every port was met by local people dancing, singing, drumming. You would wake up at six o'clock in the morning in a new country. And we're now going into Algiers. Awesome. There were even times when he was tired of sightseeing and he stayed on the boat and played on the water volleyball team while I went to the voodoo village and watched the chicken get beheaded. Good morning. Good morning. Two passports, please. <laughs> 4016. I just need you to sign for both. Okay. Make sure that it's under your name. So this is for Master Corin. One is kept by the immigration official, okay. and the other one is kept by you. And we'll be collecting your passport at the gangway as well. Got our passports. Yep. What are you going to do with them? I'm going to give them to them. Hopefully they don't wonder what this is. Funny, funny. Somehow I get the feeling messing around with immigration officials is probably not going to yield anything positive. Thanks, uh, please because we were traveling during the school year. There were no other children. But on the sweet side of that, he formed friendships with adults. Besides me, my mother was the youngest person. There was the odd 19 year olds that I could say, hey, I'm actually within a decade of your age. And one day I couldn't find him on the ship and I was going round and round thinking, where is he? Where I went all the usual places, the internet cafe, the library. I learned how to spend time with adults I come around the corner, and there is Corin playing Mahjong with five... Seven, eight-year-old women. I just stopped and looked and thought, oh my god, this is priceless. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Golden Triangle, yeah. Thailand, Myanmar, Laos, three countries. That's why the name of Triangle. There were so many things that there's no way I could have learned it in a book. I guess I was world schooled. They're still very open, and I'm so glad that we were able to travel when he was that age. I guess my mom was more interested in the social interactions and that type of stuff, but I was more interested in, like, the animals and stuff. Oh. 
boy. That's their sound? <laughs> I had to understand, it, while I was always looking out the window at everything and taking pictures of everything, and I would say, Corin, why aren't you looking out the window? I mean, we'll be here one day. His answer was always, well, I'm gonna be back. I'm gonna be back with my wife or my kids or as a college student. My thought to myself was, this is it. The chance of me coming back to the same place again in my lifespan with my resources is not so likely. I have no ambivalence about showing poverty to my son. My son's response to most people's questions about what did you come away from your trip with was always unlucky. And that's big because I think a lot of American children grow up feeling entitled and that this is just how it is. But he realizes that it might not be that way for everyone. Basically, most of the world is like that. You think so? Yeah. Really? You think more of the world's like that than the way we live? Well, that's actually normal. The day that we went to Lao and we saw real poverty, I mean, kids were hungry. Kids were reaching for his little snack. He couldn't eat in front of them. He, he gave it away and it was devoured. That left a profound impact. It left a profound impact on both of us. I, I took some of my most moving photographs that day. So then, what do you think about the way we live? We have a really good life. Do you ever think we could live here? Mm. Nah. Too hot. Being filmed and taking pictures of all the time got a little old. Whoa, really? Oh, it's a sleepy head. Doesn't want to get up. What are you doing, Mom? Getting watching you get ready. No, turn that off. We are in Reykjavik. And this is what it looks like out our hotel room window. And here we have Corin working hard. It seems like I've made a couple of mistakes with planning. One was counting on the U.S. Postal Service to deliver an international priority box in 10 days, like they said. Here we are on day 11, not here. We leave tomorrow. Very scary. I've also made the mistake of booking two flights too close together at different airports in London. And I'm feeling very exhausted by it, and wondering, questioning many things about what we're doing on this trip right now. Nothing much was scary about the trip except for this one interesting experience in Senegal. The taxi situation that he describes could have been dangerous. No question about it. He misses the turn to get back onto the boat, and the second turn, and the third turn. And, I mean, there's a boat to do only cruise-sponsored activities because this was something we arranged on our own and we took our chances. I feel like that could have been a bad situation. Fortunately, we were with another mother and child, and the other mother was uh, very assertive and said there's no good reason to go and open the trunk and we're out of here. And we took off on foot and went against traffic. That's another thing we learned, always go against traffic. Prague was challenging because it's not your conventional grid. And you can't just say, turn right at the beautiful church because there's a beautiful church on every corner. And you can't really see the sun, so you're disoriented that way. Lost in Prague. We have been lost now. How many times? <laughs> I have never been lost so many times in traveling as this city because while they do have squares, which are really more like octagons, they have streets that go off at like bicycle spokes. <laughs>
the things that I missed most about being in the, in the US, root beer was a big one. Because Europe doesn't have root beer. Africa doesn't have root beer. Asia doesn't have root beer. I planned to travel for the school year. What happened was six months into the trip, Corin really wanted to come back. What day is it? Halloween! And what's going on outside? Uh, there's a major storm that will, uh, that's, the ship's about to sink. No, so... the ship's not about to sink. But I do want to see if we can see this. Whoa! Oh. Holy cow! Holy! I never felt lonesome on the trip of, of people company, but I did feel lonesome on the trip of children company just because it's an entirely different thing of grown-ups and children. With children, you can talk about the most random things and laugh all the time. But with grown-ups, if it doesn't make sense, it doesn't work. Do you miss your friends? Yes, I do. A lot. What do you miss most? Playing them. And especially Force Unleashed 2. <laughs> That's just a video game. Mom, mom, but it's my favorite. But it's my favorite video game of all time. Here yes. you are traveling around the world, and you're missing <laughs> playing video games. Really? Just one of them. <laughs> Over the course of this trip, I grew like four or five inches. I, uh, I gained at least 15 pounds, and my voice drops. I lost nine teeth. Another tooth came out? Oh no! Well, no he out. Where'd you put it? In my pocket. Okay. Did it hurt? No, no. He literally became a man on this trip. His voice dropped. He grew five inches, I'm pretty sure, because we're almost looking eye to eye now, and when we left, I could rest my chin on the top of his head. I was taller than normal. I mean, even in America. But some, in some countries, like Asians, they're a little bit shorter. So, I felt really tall. I was never lonely. I mean, tap, 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 and you're in touch with people. We Skyped a few times, and I wrote lengthy letters to my family that my friend would print out and mail to them so that we were sure they got them. I could have kept going. It was only out of honoring my son's homesickness that we came back when we did. We traveled to 27 different countries, some for only one day, some for several months. I think we uh, did a good amount of countries. Where'd you get the pomegranate? In Barcelona. What? Wait, no, I mean, uh, in Morocco. Right, in Casablanca. I think my top three were Ireland, uh, Thailand, the United Arab Emirates. Ooh, you really? You went to the United Arab Emirates? Yeah. Oh my god! Inside ski slope, biggest water resort in the world. Some of the most fun things that I did was the biggest water park in the world in Dubai. Dubai appealed to Corin because it was full of big boy toys. It's not a place that you would really thrive as a working professional woman that I could see, but it had the biggest and the best and the wildest and the most extravagant item that you could imagine. And of course that's appealing to a 10 year old boy. On Facebook, most of my friends are actually from Thailand. Show us where we've gone. We shared so many experiences on the trip that there's always this, some things that it's like, hey, this reminds me of that one place in Vietnam. 
said, or, hey, don't you remember that one place in Africa that we went? And, yeah. You don't need to know about all those... Well, to me, I, that, that's the fine art of it all. It's the fine dining of language, is being Enough. able to use all those different terms. Yeah, mm -hmm. I agree with you on a level. Here we were in a rickshaw, going through a very old part of Beijing. But what I remember about it is the conversation I had with my son. We were engaged in a conversation about something completely unrelated to where we were, but we were connecting in a new way, in a new level. And that's the beauty of a trip like this. You know, in the mountainous area, uh, most of the people like them, they could uh, sing a very nice folk song. If you want, I could invite him to sing a uh, folk song for you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Corn was most fully engaged when we were in China. In China, there were really three things that I wanted to see. One was the Great Wall of China, second was the Terracotta Soldiers, and the third was the Three Gorges Dam. I got to see all of those. <laughs> Excellent! Was it fun? <laughs> all right, where are we? Um, China. Oh, yeah. How long have you been waiting for this moment? Well, since I heard about How far do you think we'll get? Well, me or I? <laughs> That's mean. There he is at the very top. Okay, he needs to come down. I'm not going that far. Hi, buddy. Hey. You see that tower up there? Yeah. You can barely see it over the ridge, but there's another tiny tower on top of it. Yeah. And there's no stairs to get up it. You're not supposed to go up it, but that Scott uh, boost, boosted me up and we went down there. And how does this feel? This is the, really the end of our trip. <sighs> feels great. This is a good way to end our trip. You ready to go home? What are you looking forward to most? Nerf guns, we friends, my DS, the playing around the neighborhood, my bike, all that stuff. There was a quote by some ancient Chinese wise guy, and the quote was, you are never truly a man until you hike the Great Wall. Mary first you, then Corin. What did you take from this as a mother with your son beyond just the, I love my son and it was good to be with him? <laughs> well, I mean, yes, before we left, we were doing a lot of rushing, rushing from school to Cub Scouts, eating fast food in the car. And what I wanted to do was embrace this fleeting moment of motherhood, childhood. It goes so quickly. And for that, we were able to savor that time and we will have that forever. But I think the ultimate lesson is that we are global citizens. We have one perspective when we're raised here, and when we get outside and hear how other people think about us and what they think about us, it's quite enlightening. Truthfully, when I look back, the world does smile on a family seeing the world. They're proud to show you the world. They're in awe that you took the time and spent the resources to come and see them. And there's a silent code to leave a mother and child or a family alone. It's one of the best things I've done in my life. And uh, it would be great if more people did this. I think the world would be a much more connected place. I am pretty sure that when I'm uh, in my wheelchair or having my walker that I'm going to say that this is one of the highlights of my life.